So I'm about to take the carbs off the engine. So I've removed the petrol tank, which on the T160 is very straightforward. There's just a bolt in the back of the tank there. You take that and then the front of the tank slides off these uh, rubber bums here. On a T150 or Rocket 3, there's a bracket here at the front with two bolts uh, and they have to come off so it's a bit more of a pain but easy on the t160 so what i'm going to do now i've got the tank off i've loosened uh, the clips onto the uh, the rubbers connecting the carbs to the manifold uh, i'm going to take on my case i have open bell mouths so i'm going to take those off give me a bit of working room and then i'm just simply going to wiggle the carbs back uh, and the whole thing comes off the, the choke assembly, the whole thing comes off uh, together, especially on the T160 on this model, the choke is on the carbs, so that makes life a lot easier on some models, T1, some T150s and Rocket 3s, then the choke cables on the handlebars and obviously it's got to be uh, disconnected, but on the T160 and some T150s I think, then the uh, it's great if the uh, choke's there because the whole thing just comes off in one go. The only thing to disconnect is the uh, throttle cable. Uh, and I, when I get the carbs loose, then I'll take the throttle, I'll undo the throttle cable and unhook. Uh, sorry, well, I'll undo the throttle and then unhook the cable. So, uh, um, so I can literally lift the whole thing onto the bench, which is what I'm going to do now. One other thing to mention before removing the carbs is that they're probably full of petrol. So it's a good idea to run the engine with the fuel taps off uh, before removing the carbs because that gets rid of all the petrol that's sitting in the float chambers. And of course, I haven't done that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to empty as much fuel as I can by simply uh, moving this uh, fuel pipe down. But even then, when I get the carbs out, I know that the bowls will still have fuel in so they need to be emptied before I do anything else but let's see if we've got any fuel in at the moment yeah so there's just that bit so I'm just getting rid of as much fuel as I can before taking the car there so the cars are now free you literally just pull them off uh, the back uh, of the uh, inlet rubbers and the whole thing the choke everything it's all in one piece and I've taken the uh, I've taken the throttle off so I can remove the cable as well. But the alternative is you can unscrew the throttle cable at this end, and so you don't have to take the you don't have to take the throttle off the handlebars. Six of them after the other. I just done it that way. What I'm going to do now is, I'm li is literally the whole thing just lifts out, and I'm just going to take it, drain the petrol that's still in there into the sink. And then I will uh, put the uh, put the carbs on the bench. Right, first thing I'm doing, having taken the carbs off, is to check the manifold rubbers for any splits or cracks, because if they're split or cracked, that will let air in, and they'll never run right. Okay, but I've checked all these. I normally just leave those in place so you don't lose them, and they're all absolutely fine. Okay, but uh, manifold rubbers, they're not at all expensive. And if they are at all dodgy, then uh, always wise to replace them. But mine are pretty new and they're fine. And I've uh, emptied out the excess petrol. And so here are the carbs now sitting on the bench, just all in one piece with the chokes that are attached. They all just come off like that, which is great. They're all just in one, in one piece. The only difference, the only difference to mention on mine, obviously, I, I've got stainless steel hoses, but also I've got a Clive scarf uh, tick over adjuster, which is great. So you can just adjust the uh, tick over uh, there without having to mess about with a silly thing. I don't know whoever designed that, but they do want shooting. I'm afraid the tick over screw that you have to try and reach in is impossible to get to. So you take that out. Uh, it's from Clive Scarf, it's Clive, Clive Scarf Systems, everything's stainless steel and that's a great bit of kit so that's the only difference on mine. 
and also I have Premier carbs fitted uh, and we'll talk about that a bit later on but it means that mine have uh, extra drillings in the sides of the carbs and uh, screws put in and those are actually the pilot screws on a normal carb that isn't a Premier those are just blanks and the pilot jet is down inside the carb new premier carbs one of the differences there's a few differences but one of the differences is that uh, you've got this rem this uh, removable plug and that plug is actually the pilot jet we'll look at it when we take it apart and that uh, a means it's easy to replace the pilot jet and b easy to clean out the pilot jet uh, um, airways because it's those that tend to get blocked up on uh, on these carbs Okay, uh, well, uh, time to start uh, dismantling, I think. Right, got the uh, carbs on the bench. I took the throttle cable off to get out of the way. And now I'll just start uh, dismantling them. The first thing I'm going to do is to take off the... Uh, uh, take off these uh, carb tops. And the carb tops have these uh, throttle rods on a trident going down. On the T160, the tops are like this. They're slightly different on earlier models. But the same thing. So when you uh, pull the throttle, it pulls on that, which in turn moves the bar, and the bar is attached to the throttle rods. And so that in turn opens the uh, slides and the carburetor. Okay, so we're going to take the tops off, which will take off the all the slides um, get them out of the way. I don't think in my case I need anything doing to them, but uh, I'm going to take them, uh, take them off anyway. So what we're going to do is we undo these little nuts here, screw the throttle rods then in through the bar, and then so then there are, so I can take the bar out and then the actual uh, tops just screw off with these. Uh, in my case they're Allen, normally it could be slotted screws to actually get the slides out. Um, and what I will do before I do that, I'm going to number the tops so that I make sure they go back in the right carburetor. Uh, because the throttle slides do wear, these slides they wear, and so it's, uh, it's important to always try and get them back in the carburetor they came out of. Okay. Right, so with the little lock nuts off, I've got a thin screwdriver that's thin enough uh, for the hole and I'm now actually screwing the throttle rods down, down, back through the activating bar until they come out the other side. And then we'll be able to get the bar out. Just need a nice thin screwdriver that's thin enough to go down through the hole. And they all out, is that one loose? Uh, it's got more turns on that. There. They're all out now, so uh, that's it. The gantry is now free. I'll take out the activating bar, get it out of the way. Uh, the actual throttle rods have gone in there, the things that actually. No, I can't, I can't lift it. Uh, and so now we're free to actually take the tops off, which I do with an Allen key. I've numbered the tops, as you can see. Right, I've unscrewed the uh, tops, so now the only friction held on by the throttle rods. There we go, and up they come, and they leave. And so the tops are out, still attached to this, because uh, and though these are the chokes, these bars are the chokes. Some people remove the chokes altogether. I have them because my bikes are kept in a garage uh, basement, and so they do need like a bit of choke sometimes to start, but. A lot of people remove them. You don't re if you do remove the chokes, you don't have to block them off or anything. You just take them out and they'll be fine. Ah, yes, look, I've already uh, I already numbered them. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, so then we're left with the actual slides. Let's have a look. Oh, it's got a turn. It's got to come out of the little lug. Hmm, what's happening there? I'm not sure. Do that one in a minute. 
Hmm. And now why isn't this one coming out? Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm. Wow, that is uh, that is tight. That was just friction in there, so there's something wrong in there. I need to look at that. That should that should obviously be smooth all the way up. Right, so they're out again. I need to, I'll check them uh, later, but I'll number them now just to make sure again that they're in the right. Uh, they go back in the right uh, carburetor bodies. Okay. Right, I've got the uh, tops off and I've got rid of all the, I took the choke off, uh, choke lever off, just to get it out of the way. Uh, and what I should do now, if I was doing a major refurb of the carbs, I would undo these bolts where the carbs go into the uh, uh, gantry uh, and then I'll have each carb off. But I'm not going to do that because in my case I'm just doing a light refurb. I shall probably regret that and probably have to take them off anyway when I find that there's some problem I need to address. But for the time being I'm going to leave them in place. I'm just and now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the carb, uh, the float balls off the bottom. Again two allen keys uh, and uh, I'm going to leave all the fuel pipes on and everything uh, in an effort to reduce labour but of course it probably means I'm just making more work for myself but that's just the way it always is. Okay, so I'm just going to take the float balls off, leave the pipes in situ, and just take all three float balls off at the same time. Right, we've removed the float balls. And what we've got inside the float balls, we've got the float and the uh, inlet, uh, inlet pin. It's probably it's got a special name, and I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, these just lift out. And the pin just falls off the hit off the float. These are modern, so these are neoprene tipped, like a little rubber tip, because they seal a bit better. Uh, and these are what are called stay-up floats, so like old old ones were hollow, and they would uh, and when they punch it, they full of petrol, and so they wouldn't float. These are unsinkable floats, allegedly. Um, okay. And everything's looking all right, but I have noticed that there's a bit of crud in the bottom of that carb, and there's some sort of weird emulsifying stuff in the bottom of that one. Just uh, this one looks okay. So this, I don't know where that's from, since uh, but that could certainly be a problem. Uh, Okay, and then here we have the main jets. Here's the main jets, and then at the other end of this, we'll undo it in a minute, is what we call the needle jet, which is up inside there at the moment. They all look clear uh, because they can block. It's not usual, but you know, on a really bad carb, they can block. Uh, so what we need to do is I need to thoroughly clean out the bowls, get this crud out. So in my case, I've got slightly irregular slow running which is often caused by an air leak or caused by crud or a blocked jet somewhere. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, okay, so we've got those out. I'm going to clean the bowls out, but I'll probably leave that till later. I'm just going to put the floats back in loosely for now, just so, again, they stay in their right, uh, their right bowl. Not that it matters that much, but you know it's always good to keep things the same because there can be variations carb to carb. I'm just going to set those aside for now. Uh, we'll clean them later on, and I'm going to take out the uh, main jets, and so we can see the needle jet the other side. I'm pretty sure they're clear, but I want to uh, clean them anyway. Mm, so I'm just looking, uh, and here we have. Uh, these are one of the entrances for the pilot jets. That's the pilot circuit, which operates at low speed. And it can be these, and uh, you see all these lumps and that in the in the car, but they're all airways, they're all drillings. And uh, they can block up uh, quite easily because they're quite fine little tubes in there. Uh, and that's always a suspect with these carbs. Uh, the Amal concentrics is blocking of the... Uh, pilot 
circuit is is relatively common. Anyway, uh, we'll check that later. We'll get the uh, we'll get the mains out to begin with. Okay, so we unscrewed the uh, jets from the carburetor body, and that's the main jet, and this is the needle jet. Uh, they're pretty new. Uh, they're pretty new carbs, so everything they all seem clean. You can uh, you know look through them, and it's all nice and clean. That's what you need to do. Just check there's no crud. The main jet. I don't know if it'll focus here on mine. They're 160. Most uh, uh, triple the main jets are 150, but because I'm running with open bell mounts, they're recommended I go up to 160s uh, to make it, try and make it a bit richer because the bell mounts obviously make it leaner. Uh, and that seems to work well. And then I've got, uh, what, 106 uh, needle jets. And I think that's standard on standard needles. But they're all, uh, I've checked them, they're all clear. There's no crud in them. So uh, I think they're fine. I shall just uh, pop them in their respective uh, carbs for now. I mean, if I was doing this properly, I would do one carb at a time. But of course, I'm not doing it properly, am I? Okay, so then the main thing, which is what I want to go, why I've taken them apart, is I'm now going to remove the actual uh, pilot jets, which as I say, because these are premieres, they have this extra screw in uh, pilot jet, if I can show you it there. Each of the carbs, oh, come on, come on, pick it up there, I think you can see it. Uh, and so I'm going to take those out, and what I'm going to do is, because I'm lazy and I haven't taken the carbs apart, I'm going to use a right-angled screwdriver, if I can find it somewhere. Uh, I'll use one of these two, because I'm lazy, and uh, get them and unscrew them. Oh, it's gone straight in there, unscrew them like that, we'll see. Just want to remember, these are uh, Premier carbs, so that's the main difference, having the screw and pilot jet. So you can take it out and clean up. And also, another difference are the, uh, the actual throttle slides, they're made of... A different, a slight, I think it's a slightly uh, um, different material. Not sure if it's harder or softer. I uh, imagine it's a softer material, so they don't wear the bores of the uh, of the actual uh, uh, carburetor body so badly. Because that's a classic on uh, AML concentrics so that the, the these actually wear, and these wear, and then you get air leaks around the side. So, or, or rather, around the side, so the air is coming in there. And what it does, it when you close the throttle, the air gets around the sides, or uh, and so it sneaks in, and, and that's why you get a regular running because the bores are worn. And so, instead of sealing the air off completely, air can come in and get around the side. So, uh, that's another difference on uh, uh, AML premieres. I used AML premieres, other people swear by getting their original carbs re-sleeved and you can and then they actually you can actually um have this uh modification then done to original carbs there's a they're, they're normally blanked off so what you do is you drill that out and put those pilot jets in well not pilot jets as you just put in a, a blank screw uh so that you can get in to clean the pilot jets out um and uh if you've got a triple, I know that Richard Darby at 3D Motorcycles, uh, he's one of the people that specialises in refurbing original carbs, if you fancy doing that, rather than buying a set of uh, new premieres. Right, I'm going to uh, have a merry old time because I'm lazy unscrewing these uh, screws, which will take me forever because I can't get a straight screwdriver on. And so, as my mother would always say, lazy people take the most trouble. Because I'm too lazy to bother taking the carbs off the gantry. It's actually causing me more work than it would have done if I'd have just done that in the first place. Human nature or something like that, I think. Right, um, one thing that I have noticed with these carbs is the I have now removed the pilot jets and these are the pilot jets that you'll find in the Premier carburetor. So the actual pilot jet is in the end of the screw. On earlier models, non-premier um, carbs, the actual pilot jet is up in the body of the carburetor. So normally I think in about where there's just a, a hole. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, uh, no, it's not that one. Where are we? Uh, 
Uh, oh no, I think it is that one. No, it is that one. Sorry. Um, that's where you'll find a pilot jet on an, a normal car, but on Premier's, it's actually in the screw. Right, now this screw, let's see if it will focus on this. Let's see if I can fool it. Just come on, focus on that little thing. Come on, where's the focus on this damn camera? Uh, I don't know. Oh, there, it's the side there. Right, now you pick it up. You see there's two two rings. Oh, where was it? Where was that focus? I don't know. I don't know. There. Right, you see there's two grooves in the end of the uh, pilot jet. Now that tells me that that's a size 17. Um, now I have here some uh, different jets and you'll see they've got three rings and that means that this is a size 19 pilot jet. Now I think the uh, Premiers generally run better on 19s uh, and these are relatively old Premiers where they used to put 17s in. I think all Premiers they now do 19s generally. But Mine's got 17, so I'm going to take the 17s out and put 19s in, which I think is one reason why I was having trouble with the slow running, uh, because I know that they generally run better on 19s. So it's always worth checking if you do have uh, premieres that you do have this new, uh, that the pilot jet has the three rings on it, which indicates that this is a slightly bigger pilot jet, a uh, 19 size, and then recommended. Right, anyway, before I put the new pilot jets in, the main thing I'm going to do is to blow through. I'm going to use compressed air to begin with. I'm going to blow through all of the pilot jet uh, uh, airways uh, and uh, just to check everything's clear. I'm pretty sure it is, and I'm pretty sure that my problem is based on those uh, the actual size of the pilot jet. But uh, double, I'm going to blow through with compressed air and then finish off with carb cleaner. To double check that all those airways and uh, are, are clear through the body of the carburetor. Right, I forgot. Um, yeah, before blowing everything out, I took out um, the uh, pilot adjusting screws. Now these are the normal adjusting screws that go in the carburetor, which on the, in the case of a Premier, on the opposite side to the actual pilot. And all carbs, uh, all, all carbs have these uh, adjusting screws. The pilot jet is fixed; that's fixed. So you know, whatever size you put in, that's the size. But then you've got the adjusting screws, which then allow you uh, to fine tune the, the the mixture in the in the pilot jet or in the pilot circuit rather. And the standard uh, setting is to screw it fully in, and then one and a half turns out. So I've also I've also removed all these three adjusting screws from either side of the carbs and the three pilot jets. And then I'm going to blow air through the pilot system, which is basically this hole in the back of the carb, a hole in the uh, in the bottom of the carb body there, top of the carb body, and then above all. Hopefully, I'm going to try and pick this up. I think, hopefully, you can see here yeah, that there are two little tiny pilot holes there in the Venturi. One in uh, one in front of the main jet, uh, and uh, one further forward, nearer to where the torch is. So there are two, yeah. And these uh, torches decide to die. I mean, there we go. And these two holes are there. Um, because uh, they're, they're both pilot now I'm going to turn this off now because the uh, that's going the, the um, now the hole that's nearest uh, the front here now that works when the throttle slide is fully down then the pilot um, here the, the, the further back one can't work because the sl slide shut it off so uh, that pilot uh, will uh, work even with the throttle shut drawing fuel in and feet and helping the engine uh, run a tick over the uh, the pilot hole that's further back is like a secondary pilot hole and so as the throttle opens then it will also draw fuel through that second pilot hole and the reason for that is to try and help the transition 
between running on pilot and running on uh, the main the main jet the main carburetor because another thing to get your head around with these carbs is they're essentially two carburetors they they have a pilot jet and they uh, a pilot circuit pilot jet and they have the main jet and so when the throttles close they run on the pilot circuit and that's why you're a tick over that comes from and that's why sometimes you can have a regular tick over because they're so prone to blocking then when you actually open the throttle and then you're using the main jet the main carburetor okay so you need to think of the carbs as actually being there are actually two carbs in one the pilot circuit tick over and then the main circuit which is using the throttle okay so it's really really essential because they're so small those two little holes it's really really essential to make sure they're completely unblocked uh, otherwise the bike simply won't tick over properly and the transition from tick over the pull away you'll probably get that hesitation that classic hesitation between pulling away uh, between tick over and pulling away because uh, you can have blocked pilot circuits okay which is so what I'm going to do is come on focus I'm going to use a compressed air just to check and feel everything uh, and it should feel okay and then I'm going to finish off with carb cleaner anyway now if those uh, so I'm going to blow and um, so I check the air is coming out of here and that it's coming out of here where the pilot jet goes and the adjuster screw goes but in particular that it comes out of those two little holes there those are the ones that really block okay okay i've uh, come outside because i've got the carb cleaner and this stuff is bad news for breathing in you know environmentalists would probably die but even i am you know pretty used to this stuff over 40 odd years of messing about with engines even even i can't have it in the house so always good to do it outside now, now what i've done now is i've blown air through and i think everything's fine so what i've done is i've loosely now put the uh, adjust the pilot adjustment uh, mixture screw back in and the actual pilot um, jets themselves only loosely just enough to seal the holes and now I'm going to squirt the uh, carburetor cleaner I'm going to put it, squirt it up through the uh, main the uh, pilot jet circuit and then hopefully you'll see it squirting out of the little holes in the Venturi I honestly don't know if this is going to work. I'll just see if I can move it oops, onto my worktop, also known as a bin, to see. I'm only going to do this once because it's a nightmare, but let's see if we can do it right. So, got the old nozzle in the pilot jet circuit. Move these over so you can maybe see something. There it comes. There. So, that isn't coming out of the main jet, that's coming out of. The, those little tiny holes in the uh, venture so you know they're clear that's enough of that Limey. right so I know that all the I've done that with all the carbs I've blown through every uh, possible circuit and I know that everything's fine okay so time uh, so that well that side of it's okay I'm now going to look at the I'm going to check the slides now and also have a look at this uh, this one that was sticking but as far as all the jets and pilot uh, circuit is concerned we know everything's okay right now I'm going to uh, check the uh, float heights um, so the float needle that's the name I couldn't remember so the float needle basically the fuel comes down the pipe and up here and fills the bowl for the petrol. And then get that. So oh, sorry, trying to do this with one hand. Uh, there we go. And so then the float sits in. Just literally just sits in there with that pin, hopefully in the right place. That always helps. There we go. And uh, so when the petrol fills up the bowl, lifts the float and closes the needle. Uh, and the needle shuts off and so it stops the carb from flooding uh, and these are neoprene tipped because they did used to uh, 
uh, not seal very well. I have actually had a neoprene one leak on me, but that was very rare. So what we're going to do now is basically I'm going to put these in, then fill these up, and and the float height. It's what height it, this float gets to in relation to the top of the carb. Uh, that's the float height, and it's. Um, well, there's some discussion on this. I'm going to say it's around three mil. There should, this float should be around three millimeter below the top when it seals the needle. But we'll find out. Right, I've uh, filled the uh, float bowls uh, full of liquid, which in this case is water. But you shouldn't, of course, use water, and that's why I do. Uh, that uh, that one, you see the float is a couple of millimetres below the level of the float chamber. That one's pretty much the same. That one is definitely too high. Yeah. That one's just below. That one's just below. That one is too high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust that by simply bending the uh, ears on the uh, on the float. These ears here, where they fit around the needle, so that uh, it basically uh, the needle seats slightly earlier, and then we'll do the test again. You can't just uh, do the you can't just bend the bend the tabs and put the thing back in because obviously. You need to see how much water it is when the water comes back in again. So you need to empty a bit of water out, put the float back in and then refill it and see where the float stops. So uh, that's what we're going to do. See if we can get that this float the same height as the other two, just below the uh, level. It's, uh, it is actually very slightly proud of the uh, top of the float bowl at the moment. Okay, I've uh, adjusted it. The first time I did it, it was too much and the float was too low. But now, I think those floats are all pretty much uh, dead on. They're just below the level of the uh, top of the float chamber and that's, I think, exactly where they want to be. So I'm happy with those now. Uh, what I'm going to do is, I have used water to fill the float chambers with. Uh, which obviously isn't great, so now I've got to be absolutely 100% sure that uh, there's no water left in them. So we'll take the floats back out, make sure I know which floats which bowl, obviously, and uh, flush it out with dear old carb cleaner again, and then uh, leave it to dry, and I'll finish it off with a hair dryer or something, to make sure there's absolutely no water left in there at all. Right, turning to the throttle slides, I've checked them all, cleaned them all, and this is the throttle needle, and I've checked that the uh, clip is in the same groove uh, on each needle. Sorry, just trying to get the focus. <clears throat> in my case, I had a chat with Amal, and they recommended top uh, the top notch for mine, uh, and that seems to work well. You have to remember, when you're looking at carbs and you've got a problem, the uh, the different uh, parts of the carburetor that work at different throttle openings. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, I've also, you know, this was stuck in the top, and what I've done is I've found that there's a little. Um, come on, focus. A nick, a dent. Look there, just there. A screwdriver or something has caught it. Well, that's me. Let's face it, it's probably or. Or whatever I don't know but that that little dent screw head or um, screwdriver blade or whatever and of course it just bruised the metal and caused a little uh, bump and that's what the uh, throttle was catching on okay so I'll put the um, needle back in that one and then uh, put them in and uh, then we're getting near uh, ready for a reassembly oh, come on focus thank you so I'll uh, I'll put this uh, I'll put the needle back in uh, the throttle slide, it just literally um, sits in there. Let's see if I can get it. You need the th throttle rod in there first. 
and then the needle goes in the side hole and slots around the uh, the throttle uh, the throttle rod I can't do it with one hand but you get the idea it sits in like that and you have to make sure they're all properly seated I can't do it now I've seen them before well like now it's sitting on top of the throttle rod things like that and then it will just uh, come out so you have to make sure that these clips are perfectly seated so that when the spring goes on top of them everything's fine I have seen them misseated before and then the clip comes off and I've seen carburetors with clips in different grooves and different slides and all sorts simple things like that and you know the car it will never run right okay I'll uh, get that sorted I'll get that seated properly put it back in and then we'll carry on yeah uh, those slides are all in now just one thing obviously when you put them in you have to make sure that as you slide them down that the uh, throttle needle goes in to the to the jet um, if it doesn't again it can unseat itself come off the clip or, or at the top and all sorts so make sure that when you are sliding those down that they uh, that they seat properly okay uh, right, yeah, so uh, different parts of the carburetor. So uh, let me get this right. I'm going to use my crib sheet here, which is the, uh, and everyone should have one of these, the a very basic guide to the annual car. Uh, and people forget this, it's so simple, okay, just get it in your head. So up to an eighth of an inch throttle. The whole carb just runs on that pilot jet uh, circuit. The rest of the carb, all the needle and the, uh, the throttle slide and, and everything doesn't do anything. You know? So that's why often at idle you get rough running because the pilot jet circuit is blocked. Then from an eighth to a quarter, the size of the throttle cutaway. So that's it. This actual throttle slide, just, the, the actual, you can see it's not cut straight. It's got an angle, like a semicircle, and um, you can get different uh, cutaways. Now the standard on these are four, and mine are actually three and a half. I reduced them to three and a half again because I was using open bell mouths, and that's helped uh, the slow run in a lot. So you can alter, if you've got an eighth to a quarter open, which is actually where you run an awful lot of the time. I know it sounds mad. But that you, if you actually look at your throttle <clears throat> when you're going along, you'll find out you're using that a lot. <clears throat> then quarter to a three-quarter throttle is controlled by the needle position. Now I have no trouble with that on my bike, so that's why I left the needle position there. And then three-quarter throttle to full is the size of the main jet, mine are one sixties. Um, now most people go, oh, there's something wrong with the main jet, even when it's not idling properly. No, the main jet only affects like right full open throttle. So, you know, it's really important to get that to get that into your head. If you've got a slow running idle problem, it's pilot jet. If it's uh, stuttering a bit on pull away, then it could be pilot jet or to through to throttle cut away. Then the needle position uh, controls the uh, mixture uh, quarter to three quarters and main jet only does the last quarter. OK, so depending on what the problem is with your carb, you know, you need to come back to that. It's, oh, I've got a problem with my carb. I think the main jets are blocked. Well, what's the problem? Oh, it's not idling properly. Well, obviously, it's not to do with the main jets. Yeah, so always bear that in mind. Um, but, so common problems with these carbs, especially at low revs, is a blocked pilot jet or air leaks around worn throttle slides uh, that, again, affect the running uh, the mixture and therefore will affect the speed of the engine. Those are the two main problems, I think, with uh, uh, Amon Mark 1s. I'm sure others will disagree with me uh, and so on, but that's just from my experience. OK, ready to start uh, reassembling. Just made sure that all the jets are tight. Everything's totally clear. I've totally dried out the... Uh, float bowls and the uh, uh, fuel pipes so they are completely dry from where I filled them for the water to test the uh, float levels. So I've now in 
put the uh, floats back in and ensure that they're fully uh, fully home, that they're not uh, misseated, easily done, and that the the uh, float needles are all in the right place. And then I'm balancing the, the uh, gaskets on there. And this is where I start paying for not having taken things part individually I'm now going to try and lower the carbs onto the float bowls without uh, disturbing any of the seating and try and get the whole lot to do up uh, which may prove more difficult I'm not sure we'll see see how we get on so I'm going to go off camera because <clears throat> I can't hold uh, the camera and do this sort of stuff uh, and so all I'm going to do is literally just pick that up, drop it onto the floats and then try and get the screws in without disturbing anything. Um, come back to you hopefully when I've done that, hopefully before too long. OK, I've uh, managed to get the float poles back on and uh, tightened them back up using the uh, Anna bolts. Uh, to be honest, that was not a great way of doing it. Well, I knew it wasn't going to be. The main problem is that, as you've probably seen, the floats just balance on those hinges in the top of the float bowls. And it's so easy for them to be uh, knocked when you're lowering the carbs down and for the hinge pin to come out and maybe dislodge the, the float needle. So I really wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, I mean, I've done it and I think I've got away with it. To be honest, the only real way I'm going to know if I've got away with it or not is uh, uh, when I put the carbs back on. Uh, really, you should do the carbs, should, each carb should be off and you should do each one individually. Uh, but <laughs> uh, uh, lazy people take the most trouble. Okay, uh, coming to a bit of a tricky bit on triples, <clears throat> uh, which is to get the. Uh, Carb tops uh, back on. Uh, but, uh, it's tricky because of these uh, these throttle rods. The uh, throttle rods you have to make sure they go through the uh, tops of the uh, carbs. They've got a little rubber a little rubber seal which makes life awkward. You have to make sure they go through uh, and they uh, without pushing them accidentally down. And they can go out the bottom of the throttle slides and everything gets in a mess. You have to double check that the uh, needles are seating properly. In fact, and just as well, I'm checking because that one, I don't know if you can see, is clearly not seated properly. That one's fine. That one's fine. But you can see the clip on this one. You can see it's definitely not seated properly. So... Uh, I'll take that one back out and what's happened there, but it's uh, certainly not right. So always, always check because a number of times I've seen that. I can't tell you. So when I've reseated that properly, I'm going to put the they'll put the springs in place. These are these are T160 springs. They're lighter than the T150 springs. I'm not sure about the Rocket Three, but if you are doing this, definitely change the. If you've got a T150, change these main springs. Uh, for these lighter T160 springs. It makes the whole throttle action so much lighter. Also, on a T150, you'll find lots of little springs and collets. Bin them. All you need is just the, throt this, uh, the throttle rods, just like on the T160, and that spring. That's all you need. Uh, and the, throttles, uh, the carbs will work fine, and your throttle will be transformed. Uh, I, I, my, the throttle on my T150 was so heavy that it actually used to, turn the throttle would turn on the handlebars rather than you know, rather than the actual throttle go around that's how that's how heavy it was so always use these lighter springs but i'm going to reseat that first then i'm going to put, put the springs in place down on top and then uh then put these on before i do that i'm going to just mention so these are the carbs uh chokes these are the chokes uh and if you uh, the chokes can be quite uh, tight so what you can do uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these off and I'm going to lighten the spring slightly simply by cutting I'm going to cut the springs down very slightly make them a bit shorter and therefore weaker um, the reason for that is that um, on tridents and rocket threes the choke 
is off when the uh, the lever is tensioned okay and when so these are pulled up on tension they're pulled up underneath there and what happens is that can be really tight and the levers the levers can give slowly with vibration start uh, releasing in fact therefore putting the choke on and in the middle of the ride, I've, I've had it before a couple of times, you know, in the middle of the ride and suddenly you get this massive misfire and you look at it and you say, oh no, what's going wrong? And all it is, is the choke has slowly worked on because these springs can be so tight. So uh, I'm going to do this one hand, so I'm not going to do it properly. So I need to get this off. Uh, and all there is, there's a nipple in there. And all you need to do is push down on here. So the nipple is exposed out the bottom. I don't know if I'm going to do it with one hand. I don't know if you can just see the nipple in there. So the nipple comes out and then pull it over. So then the cable comes down this channel and then that hole's big enough for the nipple to go out. Blimey, that took a while and I didn't want to come out. So I pushed the nipple forwards, lifted it up so that then the cable can run back down this channel. There's the nipple and there it goes. It lets itself, that hole's big enough to get the nipple out. And there's the springs. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shorten these springs. I'm just going to cut a little, not too much off, just a bit off the bottom, just to make them a bit weaker. You can, of course, use weaker springs. Uh, and it'll just get the, uh, yeah, and that's the actual little brass bit that the spring sits on. Don't forget that. Uh, just make the choke light a little bit lighter. There, I've done that now. Bloody fiddly job, but done. Just took these uh the choke slides off and then cut the springs didn't cut much off the bottom just uh, a little bit off the bottom of each one and just make the choke action that bit lighter and stop them accidentally coming on uh mid run oh before i put them in i meant to mention before <clears throat> you can dispense with the uh, chokes altogether just get rid of them all you do is simply just remove them remove the cable and that's it leave it you don't have to fill in the hole at the top that the, the cable came down as some people say that it's not important you don't have to fill in the hole in the actual throttle slides where the the chokes slide into you just simply just remove them and that's it uh, obviously on racing bikes and that they don't have them uh, and uh, it gets rid of that uh, danger of them accidentally coming on in the middle of a ride I, I've left mine on simply because, as I say, my bike's often we're in a basement here and the bike's a bit cold and they do like to start on choke, uh, especially like spring and autumn. I don't ride in the winter anymore. Uh, but yeah, if you want to get rid of them, just get rid of them. That's it. Don't worry about blocking holes up or filling things in. I mean, you can do. People do fill because they say that the flow is interrupted. It possibly is, but you you don't have to do it. Okay. Great, I've managed to get the tops back on and ensure that the throttle uh, throttle rods on each carb have come through the top of the carburetor. Uh, so, uh, which is great. And then I've actually connected up the uh, <clears throat> the choke lever just to get the chokes out of the way. So, this is the throttle rod. That's without, uh, let me see if I can get that. So that's without the choke. I'm gonna, I'll bring the choke on. There, you can just see the uh, the chokes appearing and if I lift the throttle rod then you can see that's the choke sitting in the middle and then when you put the choke back on they magically disappear again up, up into the body of the car which is where they should be so you can't see them at all yeah I think that's funny on here okay yeah, that, I mean, actually, that's one thing to check. I forgot. <clears throat> Do check that you that the choke does disappear fully into the body of the car. Right. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the bar back on and screw these back up. These are, on a T160. These are threaded, and they go into the thread on the bars. And then we're going to synchronize the carbs. <clears throat> wow, synchronizing carbs, huh? Synchronizing carbs simply means making sure that all three carbs open and close at exactly the same time. Obviously, if you've got one carb that's you know opening before the others, it's going to be doing all the work, and you and then you've only got really running on one cylinder, and the other two aren't doing much. So obviously, it's imperative to make sure that all your throttles, all the carbs, open at exactly the same time, so they're all doing the same amount of work. 
Okay, I've uh, put the throttle bar on uh, by screwing these up. Fiddly job, but you can do it. The throttle slides. Right, so what we need to do now is to synchronize the carbs. So we had to turn it around so we're looking from the engine side. Uh, and as you can see, they're all closed. Uh, and that's why we do the engine side. And uh, what we actually do is we synchronize the carbs so that they just, you can just see the bottom of the throttle slide just beginning to open on all three. Right, by, um, by screwing these uh, throttle rods in and out, I've adjusted carbs there's no light on this is there so I don't know if you can see the idea is that each carb is open by just exactly the same amount and then do snap open your throttle many times to make sure everything's seated and then keep checking don't just set them and say that's it open the throttle several times and then double right there we are They're all back together uh, put the throttle cable back on, yeah, choke cable, tops are on, carbs are synchronised, this is the uh, inlet side, so uh, you're not really be able to see that properly, that's why you always have to do it from the engine side, because that's the lower side of the, of the throttle slide, but anyway, they're all done, and ready to go back uh, on the bike. Okay, so, that's really good, and uh, then we find out... Uh, if we've done a good job or not, or whether the whole lot has to come off again, as is sometimes the case. But hopefully, carbs are okay and we should get a nice, uh, smooth engine. We'll find out. Okay, ticking over really nicely. I've got the bell mouths off, just so I can check the uh, check that the uh, throttle slides are going up and down nice and smoothly. So it sounds, I'm very pleased, very pleased. Just need to adjust a tick over a bit. Right, carbs are all back on now. Uh, and I think all uh, all working well. I think the uh, the problem in my case was I might have had a slight blockage in the pilot uh, circuit, and also fitting those nineteen uh, pilot jets has definitely improved things. Uh, I think these days they sell the Amel Mark ones mainly with nineteen pilot jets fitted, but mine are a few years old, and I think they fitted them with seventeens. So it's always worth checking. The other thing is it's always, always worth taking new AML carbs apart because they're good carbs, but they do suffer from quality control issues. You know, I've heard of swarf and bits loose and, and so on, you know, the needle not being in the right place and so on. So if you do buy new AML cars, AML carbs, Premier carbs, whatever, then it's always worth taking them apart, just checking everything's right before you fit them. Uh, because they're good carbs, but they do have quality control issues. Anyway, here we go. Let's see. Uh, let's see what we sound like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Touch of the button. Such sweet music. I don't know if you can see me. I've turned the camera around. <laughs> oh, that sounds so good. So good. Anyway, there you go. You get your carbs sorted and you get one fine running engine. I'm happy. <laughs>